Wild Ride Distilling is located in the Cannery District of Bozeman, emphasizing local ingredients in order to craft distilled spirits that embody the style and taste of Montana. Even growing their own sweet corn in Corvallis, Montana, Bitterroot Valley. It's 10 a.m. Let's go drink liquor. Come on. I know that it's loud in there, but let's talk to the guys who are doing it. All right. We are here. We are with Sten, Ben, and Phil of Wild Ride Distilling. Uh, I assume you all have very important jobs. We can get to that, but I want to start with this. <laughs> well, I don't know if is, I go that far. Is well, Wild Rye one word or two? I've seen it both ways. Well, you know, this is a funny you bring that up because my wife has a strong opinion about that. She says it should be two words. And I said, well, but that's not the name. The Wild Rye is named after Wild Rye, and it's a Great Basin Wild Rye. It's a plant that's native to Montana, and uh, it's sort of, I guess, um, it is consistent with our values, right? It's a, it's, it's tall, it's like six foot tall uh, grass with a seed head. It's very recognizable uh, around, if you, if, you, if you know what to look for, uh, you can find wild rye around. Uh, it's very popular in, uh, for decorative purposes and it's also uh, popular for uh, remediation meaning sort of returning the land to to its you know free wild state which is you know when we talk about wild rye we're not talking about like going wild right we're, we're talking about freedom you know and that's freedom to express ourselves in the form of art you know that's that's what wild rye is it's a mm -hmm. it's a art the art of making whiskey uh, with it with a little bit of a science bent but nice. and it's a cover that's crop. where the name that's that's why it's a yeah and that's that that's where the name comes from and that's why it's one word got there it go native <laughs> grasses your answer i like We're drinking it. native grasses <laughs> there's probably a picture of it on the internet you can put yeah. it right here i know <laughs> well, everyone <laughs> google wild rice <laughs> well, then, uh, once you, and once you see it right you're gonna walk out you know like uh what's the cherry creek uh there's there's a ton of it you'll see it immediately okay when once i mentioned what it is and once you take a look at it on on the internet yeah it, it's, i'll see it everywhere guess, it, it's this it's you know, like really tall green grass Which that's, plants that's, some. Uh, that's and that's great basin wild rye okay okay one so, word one outstanding word. yeah so what are your flagship spirits i hate you at this point <laughs> you guys i'm gonna murder joe after this podcast um <laughs> Dude, it's good we're not lying yes there. what are your <laughs> flagship spirits I, somebody else somebody want to take that question to, yeah we uh, our flagship spirit is a bourbon we call it five drops bourbon um, it's made with Montana sweet corn grown outside of Hamilton okay Bill's wife's family's been growing sweet corn for what 60 plus years 50 yeah years. Long, long time and, it's sort of a, yeah and we use that as our base for our bourbon which is amazingly delicious so do people when they come in here and do the tastings are they just like give me that one that or our <laughs> different variations of it. We have longer aged versions. We have a version that we have aged uh, in a port barrel that's also pretty phenomenal. So, wow, uh, yeah. Sounds delicious. All right. And, but, and you also make clear spirits as well. It's not all dark. Right. Yeah, we make all sorts of products vodkas, gins, rums, apple pie liqueur. We have a, even a cherry brandy, I guess. It's not technically a brandy. But um, yeah, it's, a, it's the Eichen Kirsch. Eichen Kirsch. It's, uh, Which is it's made German. from flathead cherries okay. uh, that we ferment and distill and then age it in a barrel. And that's, so. The Eichen Kirsch is German for the oaken cherry. Right? So there's, there's no grain in it? or is there Well, so, so there's, uh, yeah, there's no grain. It's, it's uh, uh, basically Montana cherries wow. fermented and distilled. And, and so it doesn't meet the strict definition. There's a, there's a German liqueur called, uh, called Kirschwasser. Uh -huh. which is cherry water in, in German, a little literal translation. All right. And it's a brandy. Um, and so ours doesn't meet that strict definition um, in, in for a couple of reasons. One being it's aged. Generally, Kirschwasser is clear. And so we take ours and we age it like you would a whiskey, yeah. um, typically four years. And... Uh, um, so it's made with local cherries, similar to a brandy, but then it's oak aged, giving us the the name Eichenkirsch. So it's a it's a wild rye exclusive product. All right. I'm I'm getting antsy. It. We're gonna have to try some of this as we're discussing it. 
May, can you set us Most up? Most alcoholics get answers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ab- absolutely. Um. Uh, and <laughs> meanwhile, while Phil does that, maybe you guys can talk about what your roles are here at, at Wild Ride. Can we start yeah, with who wants what? Ben, because he hasn't said a word yet. Oh, uh, it's, I'm the chief of, chief of operations, and they brought me in because I can scale manufacturing processes. Okay. So, and just because he's a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> we just like him. It's just nice no. to have yeah. around. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I am a CFO. Um, I'm here on the ground day to day, um, getting things done, make sure bills get paid, make sure that we can uh, spend money to put bourbon in barrels so that we can survive today for selling in four years. So it's a big financial. You're an important part. Accounts receivable, staying. Accounts receivable, planning, budgeting, all the fun stuff. That would be the stuff I was bad at. Yeah. I am bad at. What do we have here? So this is the Eichen Eichen Kirsch. This is the Eichen Kirsch made with uh, heritage cherries from Flathead Lake. All right, I'm going to I'm going to do this, but I'm sorry uh, Michelle is not. And wait, she has to I'm do grad these excuses. No. <laughs> you have to, meet you have to my do these excuses. Right after this. No. Okay, so I have to read these excuses. I'm sorry. Is am I not supposed to read this out front later? <laughs> I have a colonoscopy in 45 minutes. That's a, oh, she's not <laughs> But no, not I could do a clear liquid. Part. I could do a clear liquid. <laughs> clear liquid. If I were. Sure. So that's oh, a bad one. Um, one of us good. needs right. to be sober enough to drive Joe to teasers after this. Oh, don't, don't read them all. Let's yeah. save, save some. Fine. I like that uh, one. We, you want to smell it? Sure. Oh, that's lovely. Isn't that nice? I might have to bring some uh, of that home. We, I, should I discuss things? While yeah, we're, let's okay. do. Well, the so, nose, the body. No, oh, I have to watch <laughs> and, and talk about your role as well. Oh, my yeah. role? Well, I'm the uh, mad scientist, mad artist, as you might, whatever you want to call it. Um, okay. And uh, so I'm the chief problem causer, and these guys help me solve them. Nice. So, <laughs> so you're the artist. You're the artist. I like it. And are you the one that's also a chemist? I am a an chemist. organic chemist by trade. I'm, okay. I'm more of a material scientist, I guess, that could technically describe me as an applied physicist. Okay. But yeah, I, I, I my formal training uh, is in organic chemistry. And, uh, you know, so what is an organic chemist? An organic chemist ends up being a purification expert, mm-hmm. right? And if you think about distillation, what you're doing is, is, is uh, you know, distillation is like sort of a, can be used as what they call a flavor scalpel. Right, meaning you can you can dissect flavors and and um, essentially create a flavor profile, which is a I would call a fingerprint. Yeah. Right. Uh, it, it it'd be like you can think of it like a a, a stereo uh, uh, amplifier uh, equalizer, where you can dial up or down all the different levels. I mean, are you thinking right? of the molecular structure yes. stuff when you're putting it together, like the carboxyl well, groups? Well, molecular and structure. Like that. Yeah. I mean, yes. Right. Because if you think about um, there's in, in whiskey vernacular you have when you're distilling you have three major components and the heads hearts and tails and so the heads you know when a yeast uh, eats sugar mm-hmm. it, it, it it's this a metabolic process so it doesn't right. just make alcohol it makes a bunch of different stuff and you know when you're drinking beer you're drinking all that yeah right and and in in whiskey you have the opportunity to kind of fine tune that Right. Meaning that you're you're taking the heads, and that's the heads are going to be composed of ketones and esters and mm-hmm. you know lighter compounds. And I've so, taken so, biochem and chemistry right? so, on this, so I know what you're talking about. Esters, esters are you think of like juicy fruit, yeah. or, or or the I guess a more derogatory term would be finger, fingernail polish remover. Right. Right. You know yeah. that's that's a fingernail polish remover is ethyl acetate. Yeah. Um, but there you know there there are other compounds um, that are responsible for that for fruity. Uh, solventy kind of flavor, and that's in the heads. Okay. And then when we move into more of the the uh, uh, what we call the hearts, it's they're called the hearts because that's where the whiskey flavor is, and that's going to be your sort of more your mid palate, your umami kind of uh, compounds, right? And then the tails, the tails are going to be higher alcohols, tannins, uh, things like that that are more uh, phenols, phenolics that are mm-hmm. that are more. Um, uh, hydrophobic and more uh, higher molecular weight so okay. that they're lower boiling point right um. so and and th- these are the things that are responsible for the nose 
right? There's mm-hmm. the, the, the aromatic compounds are more what's in the nose, what you're breathing, you know, mm. what's on top. And, and the sweeter compounds are, are uh, front of the palate. And the more umami kind of compounds are what we call mid palate. And then the, the bitter and the, the oily, that viscous is more back, back. palate. Right. right, which is which is common, you know, sort of a common way to think about it in, in the food industry. But when you you know when you say or when cooking, right, in culinary mm-hmm. science, let's put it that way. Uh, but so yes, when you're when you're thinking about whiskey, you're thinking about the molecular structure. That's incredible. Cool. Or at least Phil is. is. Phil is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you're really no. real life breaking. No, I was a little excited. Wait, is it, is I was it, excited when he said you knew chemistry. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. No. Is that, yeah, is but, that, a, is that unusual? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Yeah, organic chemistry was my favorite. I didn't like the regular chemistry stuff. I'm with you there. Yeah, it's just too much math. Yeah, yeah. you're doing a great job of applying it. (laughs) I I have to say, I like it. Uh, Is it hard to make good bourbon in Montana? Because, you know, I I know that I have tried other bourbons Mm -hmm. in Montana, and they're they're like challenged a little bit. It seems like. That's a nice way to put well, it. I mean, said I think, it. We didn't say it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> didn't we, say yeah, we didn't that. say anything. We, <laughs> we don't think it's hard. Yeah, we think it's great. Yeah, we love <laughs> our process. We out. love our bourbon. Don't so. share your well, secrets, right? <laughs> I mean, this is where Dr. Phil, yeah, the chemist, so comes in. And that it, he's, it, it's funny because Montana, I, I don't end up talking too much, but I do that. It's just ask these guys. <laughs> okay. The, the, uh, but, you know, it, so Montana's a dry climate. Mm-hmm. Right, and you know, and it's 100 degrees in the summer, and it's negative 30 as we just experienced, uh, which my my <clears throat> diesel truck didn't wasn't real happy about um, mm-hmm. in in the winter time, right? And so, uh, in areas with a uh, dry climate and high degree of temperature swings, uh, that's actually really good for barrel aging. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in Kentucky, it's the the you know you have a less well, you still have a lot of temperature swing, but it's very humid. Right, so um, it you will end up with a fundamentally different product, but the aging um, climate is actually very good, uh, works in our favor, um, and uh, for that process, um, you know, one thing we are right next to the grain, right? So we don't import grain; it's all grown here. Yeah. Right? I mean, we're the number one producer of malt barley in the nation. Right, we're really? really good. Really, yeah, really good. Well, yeah, I guess it varies a little bit. Sometimes maybe we're number two, but Fine. but we'll say uh, number one for today. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. we're normally <laughs> Montana hovers around number one as okay. far as malting barley production. Right. Uh, a lot of the beer companies buy from here. Uh, we have big we have, uh, Montana Craft Malt in Butte. We have uh, uh, Malt Europe in Great Falls. Right. Um, and you grow we, your stuff in Corvallis, correct? Uh, that's we corn. grow the corn. The corn in Corvallis. Now, sorry, so, sorry. Montana is a big producer of small grains like rye, wheat, and barley. Okay. But we're not a big producer of corn. And okay. so I had this strange connection uh, that my family, my father in law, has been growing the best sweet corn you've ever even heard of nice. in the Bitter Valley. And he's written huh. up in the, in the local paper uh, as, as his nickname was the Corn Fanatic. <laughs> and, and I don't know that he ever made any money on it, but what his, yeah. his specialty was, you know, uh, he took this non-GMO heritage seed, mm-hmm. um, uh, super sweet sweet corn. There are a number of different varieties, but uh, he would plant this super sweet sweet corn in uh, patches that ripen sequentially. So he always had a patch that was the perfect ripeness through the fall. He extended his ripe season. Yeah. And he was the kind of guy that would go out and squeeze the ear and say, ooh, that one's just right. And, yeah. and, and but literally, he would hand pick it for fresh market. Yeah. And so, I mean, he was really into it. And what's interesting, you'd think you'd go to the grocery store and you'd get some good old dinner corn. You know, most of that's called sugar enhanced. Not yeah. super sweet. Some some of it's super sweet, but uh, you just taste it. I, I don't right. know how I don't know how else else to express it. You know, it's like the the the, the uh, us standing you know by the campfire throwing you know, we would literally pull corn when it was ripe off the stalk and throw it in the campfire with a husk on it, and it would cook in the husk. Right. And and I mean, I I. I it's a have you guys tried it it's a, uh, yeah, yeah absolutely it's best not, corn yes it's delicious best corn yes. you've ever had I, it's, sounds it, good it's what do you juicy. sell it at the missoula farmer's market uh it's at the missoula farmer's market like the super eight you know it's it's okay. it's pretty it's kind of locally famous in river oh, valley county so you'll have to pick some up next but, time we're in town 
but but so something that's interesting about this and why we wanted to do a product with it was one um it's unique in the industry mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure like it may have been done at some point but using fresh sweet corn i is extremely unusual yeah but as you can taste which we will taste it, it yes it, i it, think that's it, our next taste right it, <laughs> it makes a fantastic product and yeah, there's had to be some innovation involved, sure. you know, but, you know, to how do we actually do it, um, which we can talk more about that, but it... It's the backbone of the, well, the whiskey, right? I, yeah. You can't buy corn like this. You can try, but, but I've been, um, we've been privileged. You know, mm -hmm. people say I'm a moonshiner that married into corn. <laughs> but but it, but 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 it's right. It, is, it's, I've never heard that yeah. phrase. It's a. It's we need to put that on a T-shirt <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, you go to the grocery store, you buy some corn. Yeah. Boil it up. It's pretty good. Yeah. But you just don't. It, I can't describe it. It's a. It's something you have to experience. You go okay. try this corn, and it is. It is a. It is a, a different level. So we to go speak. to Orange Street Market quite a bit <laughs> so. for for produce, so we should have. We should try it out. The last time I was in here tasting, there was a huge box of corn outside, and folks were just shucking mm -hmm. corn. Yeah. Is that something that happens often, or did I just get lucky? It's our annual corn shucking party. Okay. So when we get our first load of corn coming off the farm, we throw a party. And the uh, community comes in, helps us shuck. It's like 500, 600 pounds of corn. And wow. we, you know, oh, we had, was. this year we had a grill outside, so we're grilling up corn and, you know, drinking well, whiskey. And it's that batch that we make from that, because we put it right into the grinder and into the fermenter that same day. And the, the barrel that comes out of that is called our community series barrel. And so when that's available, then we'll, we'll have that specific uh, product available that when the time comes. How cool. Farm to table. Farm there to table, you know? farm to glass. Yeah. <laughs> farm to glass, yeah. yeah. And so this is this is a, uh, it's part of our heritage. Mm -hmm. Because when we first started, like I, I mentioned, my father-in-law used to hand pick it, yeah. hand select it, right? And um, so that's what we did when we first started. And, and uh, we'd go out there with a bag that sits on your chest with shoulder straps and walk down the corn row and pick the corn. Nice. And then we would truck it over here on a, a snowmobile trailer, essentially, and we would invite people from the community down. We'd buy them a couple pizzas, and uh, we stand there and shut corn. I mean, that's that's the only way we knew how to do it at the time. Yeah. And uh, uh, finally, uh, you know, I was actually driving to go pheasant hunting in South Dakota, mm -hmm. and and I saw a big pile of corn on the side of the road, corn on the cob without the husk, and I was like. That's interesting. So I drove in the farmer's driveway, knocked on his door, and said, "What does that?" And and he said, "Well, it's called a new idea uni. It's sort of the precursor to the combine." And and so and I said, "Huh." And he took me out to the barn and showed it to me. He's a real nice guy. And then uh, uh, we new found idea one. Uni? It was a single row corn picker that has these fingers on it that shucks the corn. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, and, and, yeah and, and it's nobody uses them anymore. It's a single row corn picker, right? So my dad shipped me my grandfather's 1982 42 horse uh, um, uh, Ford tractor, uh, uh. diesel tractor. And then uh, we uh, found one of these new idea unis on an auction site. And we called the guy, and it was in Missouri, and he said, if you come pick it up, you can have it. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. So, so here there's, we are. There's our, there's our, our, our uh, first level of automation. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so great. You were like, what does that? Yeah. We're only bringing it up yeah. in the yeah. 19th oh, century. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're right, right there in the 1950s. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm guessing you then need to use the corn fairly quickly, right? Yeah. I mean, it, once you get the, sh the ear Yeah, you can, you can prefer, preserve it by freezing it, but, okay. but yeah, but, but, you know, we campaign, right, in mm -hmm. the fall, you know, when the corn's available, right. we make whiskey as fast as we can. Okay. That's just, call, uh, fall is corn season. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> quick, that's, we, quick and dirty. <laughs> we, we, uh, we uh, kick it off with the, with the annual Wild Rye Community Corn Shucking Party. That's awesome. I'll have to come so. to the next one. I didn't know. That's what, your, that. that's what your whiskey's I, made of. I okay. lucked into it. You did. Last time. I know. And, yeah. Then so. what, do, what do we use to make whiskey? Food. 
Yeah, we've we've learned that if you use food to make other food, it's a surprisingly open market. There just aren't that many people that do that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, <laughs> yeah, you're just, yeah, just to nice. follow up just on that, ninety-seven percent of the corn uh, in in the United grown in the United States mm-hmm. is uh, Monsanto Roundup Ready GMO corn, field yeah. corn, yeah. right? And uh, I, a lot of that's meant for animal feed. Yeah. And uh, that's what the big guys make whiskey out of. Yeah, it's gross. I, I don't know when I drink it. <laughs> <laughs> you either drink it or you, or you put it in your car's gas yeah. tank, right? I mean, they're, well, or, or you so put it in your steak. They do a bit better gen, uh, uh, distillation process I'm than sorry. you would for fuel. But, so, uh, uh, yeah. How did you guys meet? I'm imagining you didn't find each other on the side of the road. Uh, like you did the corn. As children of the corn. As children of the corn. Yeah. yeah how did you guys meet and a, a get together? A friend of a friend. And, uh, Sten knows him, so I'll let Sten take this one. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Phil and I both used to live in Seattle. Didn't okay. know each other then, but a um, uh, connector of ours, his name is Bob. He's on our board. But um, he worked at a company that I was working at. He worked at a company that Phil was working at. Um, I ended up moving back to Bozeman where Ben and I, our families know each other. Um, we were working on another project and my advisor, Bob, uh, said, well, you should talk to this guy, Phil. He's a scientist. He knows all the sorts of things about chemistry and whatnot. Like, you should test your idea on him. Long story short, that project didn't work out, but okay. Phil had already started Wild Rye and he's like, through conversations, like, I need some help. You guys want to help me uh, take this to the next level? And so yeah. we got connected through our friend, Bob. Very cool. Yeah. Good old, so like Bob. good old Bob. Back in good 20, old Bob. 2015, Bob's 2014, Bob, somewhere Bob is a connector. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Well, welcome. He's also extremely Bye. well-versed in, in uh, uh, finance and business. And yeah. Mergers and acquisitions, yeah, yeah. growing businesses. Nice. Yeah. yeah. First, I thought you said murders. But then <laughs> murders. Like, murders. Yeah. Acquisitions didn't fit with murder. Yeah. Well, you don't want to cross Bob. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It was like Stay uh, in Bob murders and acquisitions. Yeah, later, murder you the, or acquire you. Yeah. Bob's Sorry. an incredibly the nice guy. No murders. Right. Yeah. Got me. We have maybe. a lot of different types of advisors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe he gets uh, a free bottle of whiskey every year. <laughs> That's so right. Exactly. Yeah. magic happen here. Yeah. 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 Um, Corn silo murders. Our one of our great friends uh, has owned a restaurant here in Bozeman for 20 years. He says that he thinks your bottled and bond bourbon and rye are the best whiskeys that have ever been made in the state of Montana. Wow, that's what glowing. Would craze. you attribute your success to? What is your? Do you have any like secret juju that goes into those bottles? Why, why is well, it so good? And we should yeah, taste some. Yes. Yeah, we should. I mean, yeah. the, the easy answer to that is absolutely. We have secret juju. Have chemist? Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, chemist. What are you yeah. prepared to speak about? Well, I, like we said, when you use food to make food, yeah. it's, it's better. Our, our process is unique. Our talented um, partner, Phil, knows how to get the most out of the ingredients. Right. So he's a high quality ingredient, a uh, first class process aged in beautiful Montana weather. This is a recipe for a a great product. I know. Patience, too. And patience. It takes a lot of patience to get this far. And we spend little time being hampered, you know, hidden back to the wild, part of wild rye. So we, we, it's it's, it's a basic idea, freedom, you know, that we talk about in Montana. It's not just freedom, but it's also, you know, we look at this, it's a freedom to do what you want, right? and, And so, like, to be different, right? We're not making Montana or Kentucky bourbon here. We're making Montana bourbon. This right. is, you know, it's I don't want to make Kentucky bourbon. Somebody already <laughs> made Kentucky bourbon, and so I want to make Montana bourbon. Something that's unique to us and unique to Montana showcases mm-hmm. us and showcases Montana and our passion and what we want to do. Right. And so, you know, if that, I, why, why would you redo something that's already been done? And it's like reinventing the wheel, right? Yeah. We want to make something new and something better. And we right. have the we have the the, the unique talents. And we have the unique, uh, you know, process and the unique feedstock to make something truly unique. Yeah. And that's that's what Five Drops is. That's the, the that's where it comes from. Um, and and so what we want to do is uh, create a whiskey from, like I said, the best starting material that I've ever tasted, mm-hmm. using a process that we think can make the whiskey taste better. Right? right, 
And so we don't want to be hampered. We don't want to spend time thinking about what others have done. You know, yeah. obviously we can learn. You stand on the shoulders of, of giants, right? So, so you learn from what other people have done. But at the same time, now you add you to that, right? You take you, you take your passion, your ingenuity, your hopes and dreams, and you add it to the state of the art. And that's a benefit right? of being a small batch distillery that you yeah. can just keep experimenting and well, trying new things. Is there something you're excited is, about coming? But, like? but what is craft, right? You think about what craft, what does craft stand for? Uh, craft is here to push the boundaries of the industry. Right to learn new things, to make new products. Right, it's it's you know I mean, you know we're not we had to lament the fact sometimes we're 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 not a branding company, right? We're a whiskey company, right? It's it, we're we're here to make the best whiskey that I mean you know it's I, somewhat subjective, but we're here to make the best whiskey you've ever had. Yeah. Uh, to your question <laughs> of, of whiskey, is uh, we are experimenting with a few new products coming out. Um, we have a single malt whiskey coming out that is all Montana grain, all, all Montana barley. Um, we have a single malt rye coming out. Um, we're experimenting with four grain Montana bourbon or Montana whiskey. Four uh, grain. Four grains. Nice. Um, but again, highlighting all that Montana has to offer, whether it's corn, all barley, rye. We have a wheat and bourbon that's coming out. Um, so, a lot, lot of fun products that are yeah. in the works. And is this what some of these are? That's what these okay. yeah, little... Y- yeah, we have, we have here, we have a few, a few different things. We have a, uh, we talked about some finish. So this is our rye that's finished in a pork barrel. Um, this is our single malt uh, that's finished in a, say a single malt rye, but it's actually single malt, uh, which is malt barley, but it's finished in a used rye barrel. Okay. Which, which, what's interesting about that is, so malt, right, so you commonly refer to as scotch, right? We can't call it scotch because we're not in Scotland. Right. Um, you know, and so, um, but it's, so it's, it's a single malt. So made from a, a crop of malted barley grown in a single season. Okay. Uh, and, and so uh, it's, um, the scotch Basically, they, they aged whiskey in toasted oak, not charred oak, right? There's some there's some debate about why, but um, so a used barrel. It's common for the Scotch industry to buy used barrels from the bourbon industry, and so this is one of our used rye barrels that we aged our single malt Scotch, and uh, it gives it a delicate uh, flavor profile which really highlights the, the peppery um, yeah. aspect of the rye. Um, mm. Michelle's gonna smell it but not taste it. Because, well, Why because is that, Michelle? I don't want to interfere with the edibles I had for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Just kicking in, yeah. huh? Yeah. yeah, I mean, that has, that's a more of an evening activity, but yeah. yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, oh, that, that, would have been nice. bad. that would have been a bad breakfast. All right, so that's what Bowl single malt cereal. Tell me what, what bottled and bond means, because it seems like not a lot of Montana whiskey makers do that. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Um, our bottle and bond, uh, it has to be aged at least two years. Four. Uh, four years, I mean. Um, sorry, I was thinking it was straight. Four years, single season, single barrel, distilled, and the whole pro- process is done by one distiller. Um, so, in our That's case, okay. it's a yeah, we do a single barrel bottle and bond. So we go to the warehouse and choose our best barrel for that season and um, select that and make a decision and get it out to the public. So, it seems like a lot of work. Work is work. Work. Yeah. 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 The work all comes before that. That's yeah. the harvest. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> work. Work is a strong way to put it. Right. It's actually you get to get to sit here and taste whiskey. And, and decide the, the, the very best one that you like the best. I don't know if I'd call that work. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, um, Depends on what you're working <laughs> with, like, with all those yeah. edibles. Yeah, you but, better not have anything to do afterwards. But, but, yeah. but so our, <laughs> yeah. bottle, our bottle is bond, band, right, yeah. is, is like, like uh, Sten said, we, we think of it more like a vintage, yeah. right? And so the big guys put a lot of focus on, you know, consistency, mm-hmm. right? Well, uh, you were small, so... Yeah, well, obviously, we're going to have some batch-to-batch differences, mm-hmm. right? Just like wine, like fine wine, you know, is is uh, there's some vintages 
you know, that have differences, right? You know, you, you people will pick wine by year. And so this is a vintage whiskey, right? It's, it's made by a single distiller in a single season, aged at least four years and bottled at 100 proof minimum. And yeah. so, and it has to be made by, you know, entirely by a single distillery. It can't be blended. Like you have to put your DSP number on the bottle. Wow. So it's very strict. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one of the one of the strictest whiskey categories. Okay. So strict whiskey for something that's wild, you know, wild yeah, rice. That's true. Ooh. Yeah, you guys can't yeah. like being put in a box like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah right. well, no, yeah. well, actually, yeah. Well, we said once a year. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a. Um, we we like that because it really sort of showcases our product. Yeah. Right. Where it came from, when it was made. Yeah. Uh, we made it all. Um, and that well, is clearly a product that is designed to be enjoyed by itself, maybe with ice. Mm -hmm. Do you have other spirits that you guys make that are designed to be mixed with things, or is everything pretty much supposed to be straight here? I, 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 I like it when people enjoy our products the way they like to enjoy it. Okay. Yeah. their whiskey. I don't want to put a restriction on somebody and say you have to drink it this way or you have to drink it that way because while we know what we put into the whiskey, they know what they like and, and how to enjoy it themselves. But that being said, if I do take a bottle of Bond to somebody's party and they pour it in Diet Coke, Next time I'll soul crushing. Next time I'll yeah. take five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one hurts. Yeah, that one yeah, I won't say anything. But the next time I'll take vodka over there. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Depending on the clientele. It's the, this is a, w a question that is. Uh, my favorite tasting was the uh, hand sanitizer you guys made. Oh, I'm, I'm joking. You did not. <laughs> I did yeah, not yeah. drink it yeah. at all. But I work in the school systems, oh, and yes. the schools had a lot of boxes of the wild rye mm. sanitizers um, that you guys provided during the pandemic. Can you speak on that? Like what? Yeah, I would love to speak yeah, on that. I'm <laughs> pretty proud of what we did during the <laughs> pandemic. Yeah. So the first thing we did was, we're in the restaurant business, and like all restaurants, we had to lay off our entire crew. And then oh. us three were in here just selling bottles. That's all we were allowed to do. Yeah. After a week, then uh, Phil's wife is an eye doctor, and they needed hand sanitizer to be able to continue to provide, provide their services. They didn't have any and couldn't find any. So Phil made a five-gallon bucket yeah, I for said them. I, I said, I'm a PhD chemist, and yeah. I got a warehouse full of liquor. I oh, think yeah. we can figure something out. Right. <laughs> so we, because that so, was when everybody was hoarding the hand sanitizer. It was before they were even the... hoarding it. They didn't even realize it was gone yet. Oh, wow. So it was right Just at the very it. beginning. Yeah, and so we, uh, that was Sunday afternoon. He made five gallons for us here, too, and said, come buy some bottles, and you can refill it at one of your hand sanitizer bottles. Yeah. Buy some bottles of liquor. And... We posted that at five o'clock. Six o'clock that night, I got a call on my cell phone from the county and they needed 1,200 bottles of hand sanitizer by oh. Wednesday so they could staff all of the, the, the cars, the police cars and all kinds of stuff, the, the county employees that needed. First yeah. responders. The first yeah. responders. And so we met with them. Uh, that, so that was at six o'clock and we're part of the governor's emergency task force. That's how they had my cell phone number. Eight o'clock in the morning, uh, we get another call from one of the porta potty people, mm -hmm. and they needed a hundred gallons of hand sanitizer to put Holy into their body. to put into their porta potties because they said if they don't have hand sanitizer in those, they have to shut down the construction sites. Oh, wow. And so we took this as a personal mission. I mean, we can't do everything for the pandemic, but what we can do is keep 800 construction <laughs> I, workers I, on the job. You can I, keep the porta potties I'll, open. I'll, That's I, right. I like to tell my, my, I like to tell people my partner went all Blues Brothers on us. Yeah. Said, we're on a mission from God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we yeah. were on a mission. And That's so, so cool. He, yeah, Ben was very passionate. I was that, passionate. That we were going to make an impact. And we did make and an impact. So absolutely. In a normal year, it, it went up from there. Yeah. By Wednesday, we brought back our first employee. By Friday, we had our entire crew back making hand sanitizer. Uh, we had bought bottles out of all kinds of national bottle distributors. We were, we were distilling our vodka back to get the alcohol level back up <laughs> from 40% to 80%. Yeah. Um, uh, we had another colleague, actually another one of our partners, and he was working with legislators in the CARES Act to get some of the rules changed on sourcing ethanol. And so then we were able to source larger quantities of ethanol. We built a tank farm in Belgrade 
over we overnighted in all kinds of equipment to build a tank farm oh and we God. were able to start moving semi loads of hand sanitizer and so in a normal year we'll do about 2,500 gallons of spirits yeah and in 12 weeks we made and distributed 46,000 gallons of hand sanitizer to everybody from NASA to the railroads to the schools yeah uh, a lot of Native American tribes the post offices all over the country so cool that's amazing but how did it taste uh, uh, we put Bitrix in it. <laughs> so, uh, it's, yeah, it's funny. I got a call from one day. Oh, yeah. I got a call from NASA Glenn in Cleveland, asking me about the hand sanitizer and when when the expiration date and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, wait, you guys are from NASA Glenn and you have my hand sanitizer? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's, that's interesting. Awesome. It was everywhere. So you yeah. you went wide. With we that. had to hire, yeah. in addition to our crew, which performed. Everybody performed so much better than, I mean, everybody, everybody really stepped up. Uh, we had to hire 30 additional people to do it. Yeah, we built, we wow. went to the warehouse in Belgrade, 5,000 square foot warehouse mm -hmm. by the week. And we had packaging and manufacturing and semis coming and going out there. Yeah, That's incredible. It was, it was, it was really quite a... Thanks for period. doing that, guys. All of a sudden, yeah. it's okay for your product to go across state lines. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. yeah. It's funny. Afterwards, afterwards, I got the dubious <laughs> distinction of having to write a final report for the Federal Food and Drug Administration for the... Oh. <laughs> and and uh, That's new for you, huh? Well, it's a little weird, yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> you know, and they, they, you know, they were just following up on, you know, everybody in the, you know, production in the pandemic. And I wrote them a report told him exactly how we did it and uh, yeah you know got a letter back that said okay for, no further action is necessary awesome yeah <laughs> actually wow. I want to call out our one of our brewers here he's sitting over behind us in the window is that Andrew he, Andrew he took on the packaging portion of that and so he'd come every day here's how we can optimize our packaging system I'm going to need this many people in this place and, um, he was never asked to do that he just yeah. stepped up and did it and and our bartenders were answering cell phones. We had to put in a whole new phone system to accommodate that. We got on the Rush Limbaugh show. Uh, Maybe we should say we got on a national radio show. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> we started getting calls nationally. We put a whole That's shipping really thing cool. in place. It was unbelievable. Wow. Cheers. Here's to you, Andrew. Good work yeah. over there. Thanks for shipping all the <laughs> things across there. the country. And so what, uh, I just, what I just poured you is our pre-release uh, weeded bourbon. Okay. Smells good. Here you go, Michelle. You want to smell it? Smell it, one? and then She's not gonna taste we're going to end with, I'm auditioning to be a federal judge later today. Oh, <laughs> I didn't oh, know great. that. <laughs> Edibles in the morning? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. a big day for me. She's got an unorthodox approach. I know, I know. So, I the love the nose on this. It's oh, my God. It does smell really you know, nice. Uh, yeah. And that is super different than the single Yeah, malt. the real reason right. is yeah, yeah. Joe has far less things to do this afternoon than I do. I've cleared my schedule for this. I totally did. I'll um, be driving him home most likely. So you talked about uh, the the purification element, taking vodka and upping the alcohol the, in the it. The proof, yeah. The proof. Um, I have heard that you can take cheap vodka and run it through like a charcoal filter, a Brita filter or something, and end up with basically what amounts to high-end vodka. Is that yeah. accurate? I don't know anything about that. D depends what you think of high end, right? <laughs> what, what, what is vodka to you? You know, to the yeah. TTB, a vodka is a spirit with no distinctive color or flavor or aroma, right? So it's basically ethanol. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, if what you want is a clean, you know, vodka that doesn't taste like anything, yeah, that helps, right? So, so the, the, the problem, so a cheap vodka comes from a, 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 the easiest way to say it, it's a crappy distillation. Yeah. Right, meaning that it's not very pure, mm -hmm. right? So uh, you're going to have things that are more commonly associated with heads or tails, you know, in that vodka. So higher alcohols, um, ketones, esters, mm -hmm. you know, things that add flavor, right? And so what a Brita filter does, or a charcoal filter, simply removes the flavor compounds, right? Yeah. So, so oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, I mean, theoretically, it might, it, it'll make it taste better, or... Taste less. Tastes like nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. so, yeah. But right. is it also stripping away impurities, things that uh -huh. might make it more, I uh, guess, caustic? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's purifying it. it it'll take out the uh, um, impurities, which some people associate with hangovers. Uh, 
think we can get further into the chemical biochemical since you're a biochemist <laughs> we can talk about that <laughs> but, it, but it, yeah. Yeah, so that's not 100 percent you know it's not all of the story no there are but, absolutely alcohols that my friends will say i can't drink that it gives me an immediate headache and i'm like uh-huh but but ab <laughs> absolutely you're okay. you're uh, you're a, a, a charcoal filter will help right I don't know if it's going to take a low-end vodka and turn it into a high-end vodka, yeah. but but it will help it taste better. And how right. do you avoid hangovers? What, <laughs> what is your uh, what's well, your tip? Unfortunately, as we age, um, it's it's, all it, it's more difficult. Okay. And, and and while drinking uh, a better spirit, you know, uh, um, my my brother-in-law used to say, well, you know, this is a pretty fancy, you know, like a uh, uh, Breaking Bad high-quality beer <laughs> spirit. Um, and that helps. It, it does. You know, he, he, he was like, we should put Wake Up a Winner on the label. And I'm like, I don't know if the feds are going to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up a winner. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, it was pretty. But, but so, so I, like we were, like I said, we could talk more about hangover. But your, your hangover generally results from your, the efficiency. There's two, it's a two-step process. Your, your uh, cytochrome P450 in your liver oxidizes ethanol. To ethyl acetate, or sorry, to uh, um, what? Uh, don't acid aldehyde. Sorry. <laughs> don't look at the wrong direction. Turns so into it, an aldehyde, yeah, does yeah, it? Yeah. Okay. So, so it, that's the first step, the chemical oxidation. So it it, it, it. it changes it to ethyl acid. Uh, uh, sorry, acid aldehyde. Yes. Okay. Then, um, so then what happens? I've got ethyl acetate on the brain for some reason, but the. Uh, what, hap what happens then is there's then a further oxidation step where it turns into acetic acid. And yeah. acetic acid is more water soluble, and so you basically eliminate it through your kidneys or pee it out, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, the, the, uh, the, the um, acid aldehyde sticks around for a while, and that's pretty <laughs> commonly associated with a headache or the, okay. the you know, but so it's a it depends like some people's uh, uh body chemistry eliminates it faster uh and some people uh they get kind of stuck at that first step the first oxidation and and that's at least in the, the the prevailing wisdom prevailing science is is sort of what people think is responsible for a hangover so so how do you avoid it uh, <laughs> you get an early start so yeah, that's my yeah. strategy. Yeah. Drinking, uh, <laughs> 10 a.m. Yeah. Drinking uh, slowly uh, because it allows your your body to uh, metabolize the alcohol and have enough time. Gives your liver it, a chance. Yeah, yeah. You're not you're not <laughs> over you're not overwhelming your enzymes. Right. To because that second step is typically slower okay. to go from the um, uh, acid aldehyde to the acetic acid. You heard it and, here. Drink and, slowly. Uh, Drink slowly, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so enjoy your whiskey. So what you should do is you should drink a higher quality whiskey hmm. and enjoy it. Maybe yeah. one that's made with food. Maybe oh, yeah. one that's made with food. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, yeah, I, know, I, know, I, I know a you couple we could six drink yeah. a wild rye. I know at least one we could suggest. <laughs> so, or yeah. be smart like Michelle and do, <laughs> choose not to drink because she is an Alaska Airlines pilot and she has to be on her game. That is one um, option, I guess. Also, also, she has that new COVID variant that everybody is so worried about. She can't taste a thing right now. Oh, that, yeah, you got to get those in. And get she's in. a sexy nun. I got a, a sexy nun. You know, all the jokes that I, that I wrote. Sexy nun. Guys, this has Not been happening. super fun. Thank, Thank you so you. much for letting us come into your loud, still environment where you're actively making new liquors uh, and letting us taste some stuff. Yeah. This Thanks for coming down today. Cheers. Cheers. I'll cheers. do my empty glass. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I've got a glass of happiness, you know? We'll there. Let it. Yeah. Let it. There you go. <laughs>